Enthalpy Changes in Chemical Reactions Think of enthalpy as chemical potential energy. Bond dissociation energy, symbolized D, is the energy needed to cleave a bond homolytically. So we have a bond between atom X and atom Y, or between group X and group Y, and we zap it with the bond enthalpy, dxy, required to break that bond. And then this bond cleaves homolytically, which means that each one of the groups gets one of the two bonding electrons. And this gives us two radicals. Lots of values for bond enthalpy are tabulated. For instance, in our OCHEM textbook, it takes 435 kilojoules to break a mole of HH bonds. It takes 435 kilojoules to break one mole of methyl hydrogen bonds. But it only takes 410 kilojoules to break one mole of ethyl hydrogen bonds. In terms of breaking the bond between H and F and hydrogen fluoride, that's very expensive at 569 kilojoules per mole. For HCl, it costs less. For HBr, still less. For HI, still less. But H2O is very hard to break. Talking about breaking carbon-carbon bonds, breaking the carbon-carbon bond in ethane will cost us 368 kilojoules per mole. Breaking one in propane costs us less, 356. Here, we have 2-methylpropane. That costs us 351. Breaking a CH3Br bond is 293. CH3I is 234. But uh, carbon to oxygen is 381. And then halogen bonds. FF is not very expensive, but CL is much more. So, each one of these values corresponds to a bond strength. And the principle is, the greater the value of D, the stronger the bond. The really cool thing about bond enthalpies is that we can use them to estimate delta H for a reaction using this equation. Delta H of a reaction is approximately equal to the summation of the bond enthalpies of all the bonds that are broken minus the summation of the enthalpies of all the bonds that are formed. So say we wanted to estimate the delta H for this reaction, where we react ethane with water to make ethanol and hydrogen. So, we want to look for the bonds that are broken and the bonds that are formed. The broken ones, we're going to look for on the reactant side. The formed ones, we're going to look for on the product side. So let's tabulate. What are we breaking? That and that. So according to our table, the ethyl CH bond is right here, 410 kilojoules per mole. And the HOH bond in water, whoa. That's 498 kilojoules per mole. What are we forming? This bond and this bond. The HH bond is 435 kilojoules. And the C to OH bond, well, we don't have it for ethane, but we can assume it's pretty close to that one for methanol. 381 kilojoules per mole. 
So, delta H then equals 410 plus 498 minus 381 minus 435, which gives us a positive number, 92 kilojoules for this reaction. This means it is endothermic. Here's an exercise to try to figure out delta H for this reaction. Propane plus Br2 yields 2-bromopropane plus HBr. Here are the bond dissociation enthalpies you'll need, but it'll be helpful to draw the implied hydrogens first. Go ahead and pause your video, work the question to get an answer, then resume to check your answer. So here's what I got. And let's draw this out. This is a Br to Br bond. And this is an H to Br bond. So then we're looking over here. What's broken? One of these CH bonds and this Br to Br bond. So we got 397 plus 193. What's formed? This CBR bond as well as this HBR bond. 285 plus 368, which means delta H should approximately equal 397 plus 193 minus 285 minus 368. This gives us negative 63 kilojoules. That means this reaction is exothermic.